this series, I'm going to be sharing my five month backpacking adventure around Australia, Cambodia, Vietnam, and China. So along with sharing you some of our adventures, the idea behind this is to show you what it's really like if you're staying in hostels, or going on organized tours, or even just on an overnight train in Asia. Previously, we traveled up the coast of Vietnam with a company called G-Adventures. We are on the way to go visit the tunnels that the Vietnamese soldiers used to kind of stay in during the war. Everyone's back now and they're scared. Oh my god, I'm so scared. Hang on, I don't like this at all. This is really small down here. I'm shaking now. 14 hours on a train and then four hours on a bus. Apparently we're here and that's what it's supposed to look like. It's not exactly like the pictures on Google. For the next month, we were going to be traveling around China in a massive loop, starting and finishing in Hong Kong, with a company called The Dragon Trip. Now, unlike some of the previous countries we've been to, I had no expectations of China, so I really had no idea of some of the amazing things that awaited us over the next month. And I especially didn't expect the opportunity to camp at an unrestored part of the Great Wall of China. It's like 5 a.m. and we are stood on the Great Wall of China ready to watch the sunrise. Anyway, let's start back where we left off in Vietnam, where we had not only survived the traffic, but we had found this. So we're in the middle of Hanoi. We've come across a Harry Potter themed cafe. Amanda and Jack have gone mental. So I've been traveling with these two for how many months now and they've not stopped going on about Harry Potter. So I'll give you a little tour. This is uh, the last I don't know. This is the last oh, If you don't know that. I have no idea. So we've all ordered various potions. I'm getting butter beer. To be excited, yeah? I mean, a serious Get ready, get excited. Get excited. Mm -hmm. I think Amanda and Jack are pretty in their element right now. I can't now feel like they just beep here for no reason whatsoever. So we've officially finished the tour now, but we've got one more day here, so we've just moved rooms. Vietnam now I'm almost finished. So we've just come for a last lunch. Last meal. Last meal. We're all sat on the floor. It's so cool. London. We said goodbye to the group, and the next day we were on our way to our final destination. You need this airplane time. See you in Hong Kong. We did make it to Jack's dad's friend's house, and the next day we were off out to explore Hong Kong. To get public transport, you need to get an octopus card, like this. So you, good. You're too close to the lads. It cost us $150. Mm -hmm. They gave us a little map. We were basically going to go to Adventure and try and find the Big Buddha. We're, we're slightly delayed today. We had a little bit of a lion. Oops. Yeah, standard. <laughs> uh, the alarm went off. At what time? Like half past seven, and all of us went. No, no, just no. no. We're gonna tackle the, the MTR. 
If we never hear from you again, <laughs> we're stuck on the. We're stuck on a trip. We're, we're stuck on the underground system Hong of Hong Kong, looking for a Buddha. Yeah, exactly. We are currently currently in Jordan, and we want to go up to here to change the Tung Chung line. It's actually really easy. It's like super straightforward. It's probably easier than the tube in London, actually. We've been hearing for about 15 minutes, I think. It's not too bad. Get ready, get excited. Here at the top of the gondola, just had some food. It's all a bit like western up here. There's even a subway. Ta da! Jack's doing a dance, so is Amanda. <laughs> when these two douchebags have finished dancing, let's go see the big Buddha. Is it the second biggest? Second biggest. The second, oh my god, it's right there. Second biggest. Look at this. There it is. We're at the big Buddha. We've gone up like three flights, we're already exhausted. Really big butter. Glass bottom was $225. It's normal one, it's like what, 185 We didn't really need the glass bottom. We're in a gondola and he's out. The plan is back to the pad to regroup. You just make sure we're all ready to go because it is day one of the dragon trip. Yeah! So that's uh, Hong Kong Airport. The next day we started our tour, which began by taking a tram up to Victoria Peak to get a better view of Hong Kong. here we weren't having the best luck with the weather. This is what Hong Kong looks like. There we go. However, this is kind of what we've got. So we just did our briefing. <laughs> this beautiful view out here, it's a bit foggy. Along with giving us our first Chinese lesson, we went through how the tour was going to work and Savet explained that we would have a different guide for different sections of the trip. You're giving us? This little book, it's really cute. And it has like all the information about our accommodation and our tour and like helpful hints and like language stuff. Um, and they also gave us like a little bracelet to put on with like an emergency number for if we get lost or have any problems, which is really cool. It's like super organized, I'm very impressed. So we've just had our first Chinese lesson. We learned how to count up to 11. I can remember one. One is E. Two is R. E, R, San. San, San is three. Sun. Four is Sun. We're gonna have to practice this, I think. We're on the metro. We're officially, are we in China? Yeah. We're officially in China. We've kind of taken up the entire metro with all our bags. Ta -da. We had all successfully crossed the border into China. And after the metro, we were getting a bullet train to Guilin and then a bus to Yangshu. We're 
on the second journey bus of the day. So we've just done three hours on a train. We're now doing two and a half hours on a bus. I don't even know where we're going. Yeah, it's a young shoe. <laughs> we seem to have been travelling all day. That night, we finally arrived in Yangshu. We basically woke up to a thunderstorm, chucking it down with rain. Um, I checked the weather forecast. And it's now due to be like this for the duration of our stay here. Panda house. Oh. Everyone's in their rain max with their umbrellas, but everyone's still got a happy smile on their face, so it's all good. Okay, so we're now stuck in the panda shop because it's now chopping it down with rain outside. Thought it's like a monsoon. We need that woman's hat. She's got it sorted. Stuck in the shop. <laughs> oh, that's cute. I like the little panda on the bamboo. Holly <laughs> and Maddie, oh, that's my sister. That's so cute. <laughs> wow, so this is going to be insane. She's going to write the name on that tiny little marble. On that tiny marble, we're going to get the name written. They've got their names written on them. Street noodles. Yeah. Yum. This good though. Why do you do good. Yes. <laughs> Amanda's drawing hers. Very hot though. <laughs> <laughs> Yum. On a little bashi, this good. Yeah. Noodle soup. Yum. Mm. Oh, good. She love it. It was a pound. Like one pound. <laughs> Noodles. Noodles in the rain. Rain. Love Next up was a bike ride through the mountains to the Yulong River, where we will be bamboo rafting. We all know how good I am on a bike, so I'll leave it to Jack to show you the view. Took some time, but we pointed out. That tomorrow isn't here right now, baby An absent mind came to roam around Captured you in a foggy cloud, baby Standing on my toes on the edge, I'm ready to go I see it clear when the shadows are lit, I'm ready to go You are out of your case. She's a mad woman. <laughs> so this is pretty awesome. We're loving this right now. It's amazing. amazing. It's incredible. Right, you're going back in your case now. Before I get told off by Amanda. As you can see, you can hardly call this a waterfall. So this is a good point to explain that if you hadn't already realised, I have resting panic face. But even I didn't realise how bad it was until I started editing this series. Anyway, back to the raft, where our guide had decided it was time for a break, so we took over.
so we are in Yongsho, which basically is like a ski resort because it's like a little town surrounded by mountains on either side. So I effectively feel very at home here. Sorry, I'm really squeaky. I keep losing my voice. You know this because it's been continuously the whole thing. I've also been bitten on my head again, like what happened in Australia. So I have now have like a massive bump on my head, you can see. Yesterday we went rock climbing. That was interesting. I don't like it. <laughs> Yay, how was that, Jack? Good. I'm not the best at it, but you know, I have the upper body strength of a small kitten, ah! so climbing rocks is not my forte. This morning we're going kayaking. Oh, oh my God, I'm being delivered breakfast. No! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Belinda is amazing. <laughs> She's bought me brioche for breakfast, yes. And kayaking's canceled because okay. it's flooding. You just have to go with the flow when you're traveling because sometimes it doesn't always go to plan. You can't get pissed off about it, you just have to deal with it and do something else. So we're going to go hike up a mountain instead. This is Yangshu. See what I mean? It looks like a ski resort. It's in all the mountains. Our guide just said, oh, we could go up there if we wanted to. It takes 45 minutes. 45 minutes, my ass. It would take me three days to get up there. I'm taking some beautiful shots out the window like this. what they're doing is like easing us into China because it can be a bit full-on it's like when you just fly into Bangkok and it's like ah, mental this is the view on the 20 note had so much to offer that it's safe to say the whole group really enjoyed it. And we were lucky enough to have lunch with our guide's family. Uh, pomelo. Pomelo? Uh, let me try. Is that good? <laughs> and we even got to test out some of our new language skills. We've just been told that we have to walk up 800 steps. I'm ready for your last match. We even tried a mud bath in a cave, but it was way too dark to film, so this is what it looked like. I've just introduced the cup to the guru. <laughs> decided to try hot cupping. This is the result. Oh my god. He looks like a turtle. It's like bruised. This one looks painful. Oh, oh. oh yeah, there you go. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> You're literally mental. Absolutely mental. Why would you do that to yourself? Everyone's packing at the moment simultaneously and it's basically chaos, so I'm just gonna show you. This one did it this morning. Oh. I'm quite bored actually. Oh my <laughs> god, <laughs> quite bored. <laughs> so basically Emma's super organized. I'm just Holly, to go Holly is in a state of I'd say chaos. I need to how are you doing? How's your packing state? Oh no, you're done, you went to the no. pub. Uh, Belinda, instead of packing, is procrastinating and fixing her bag. Amanda is organised as usual. What's the packing state in here? Oh no, everyone's just boozing in here. Yeah, we just, just turn it off. This is the packing state, okay. Oh look, and Lee's back has not got any better. It's still pretty horrendous. How's the packing state in here? Jack, are you packing on the top bunk? Jack's not even trying. <laughs> okay, so we're leaving Yangshu. Yeah, We've I got two hours on the bus before we get on a 25 hour train. We had a, a massive thunderstorm last night that was coming from every direction possible. We have no power on the train, so we were told to charge everything. However, then we lost power last night because of the thunderstorm. We're leaving our wonderful mountainous resort. Another interesting sleep position from Jack. We're on our first Chinese sleeper train. <laughs> <laughs> and a three bucks, way! 
<laughs> That's three. Three, I feel like we're not quite in the same class we were last time. Jack's in the sky up there. Hello! <laughs> Hello, little people! <laughs> <laughs> so we have 25 hours! 25 hours of chaos. How many so, battles has it been so far, Charlie? How many what? 20 minutes. <laughs> how many battles has it been? Approximately 5 minutes. <laughs> Prepared travellers. Well done. Well done, Hannah. <laughs> so, this is the bar on our train. So we're about two hours into our train journey and half a bottle of gin down. It's, um, it's three o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> Since we had so much time on the train, we thought it would be a good idea to practice some more Chinese. However, no one could understand a word we were saying, so it turned out we had a lot more work to do. What's that phrase? What does that mean? I'm English. Do you speak English or I don't speak Chinese? Something like that. You know what's awesome about going to China? You become famous. I don't know what's going on here, but we've got selfies going on. They're loving the selfies here. Literally, they want you in all the photos. They think you're a movie star. <laughs> oh, look at her, she's loving it. <laughs> Chinese love that. Why is they not on our side? I think they love Amanda. <laughs> Still on the train, we've been on it forever. <laughs> We're now watching Lord of the Rings. And you have my bow. And my axe. Can you just give us that again? <laughs> and my axe. <laughs> Come see what's going on back here. Uh, we've we've, uh, we've got a celebrity. <laughs> we've got. Are you famous too? Like yes. Amanda? What, did you have seven thousand photos taken? Yeah. Yes. Um, I had to go with everyone like this. Yeah. And it's lunchtime. Belinda's Belinda's going. It's noodle day. Please get us off this train. Are you to go and see the pandas? Too excited. Too excited. Might not look good, but I am. It's like Jurassic Park. Oh my god, there they are. <laughs> when does the Kung Fu lesson start? Okay, well, pandas are officially my favourite animal now. Coming up to the, the giant panda cub enclosure. Oh my god. These are the cutest things ever. There's baby pandas in trees. <laughs> We're playing a game of real or no real. Do you think they're real? That one is just a teddy bear. That's not real. Oh, it moves. Oh, damn it. It's real. Jack's decided the pandas are his new favourite. Good job there's CCTV there, otherwise, I'm pretty sure Hannah would steal one. This is selfie cheating. <laughs> more selfie cheating. <laughs> We're at the giant Buddha, walking up to it. We've come to a dragon that apparently, if you take a selfie with it, not only is it bad luck, you'll apparently die right here, right now. Don't do it. <laughs> so I'm deliberately doing video diary facing the opposite way to the dragon, but I'm gonna show you the dragon now. There it is. Jack's risking the selfie. <laughs> and about all these stairs. When it goes up, you don't stop and you don't look back. You just keep going up. You gotta like a higher official position in your work and also can raise it up your luck. Don't look back. It's like go, go, go.
after a heavy night out because the club we were in kept giving us free bottles of vodka just because we were Westerners. The next day was a bit of a struggle. Can you hold the camera? Yeah, because I'm fed up of having a neck ache because she's a short. So we're in the Tibetan district. Everybody is hangover. We're being filmed by tourists as, no, by locals. Hello, everyone's taking as photos usual. of us as we walk through. You're being papped again. Even the bloody girl. <laughs> You're famous. <laughs> here's the Tibetan district. Oh, they're really cool. They're amazing. The rice with Chinese writing on it. More gross food. Why would you want to eat this? Oh, ice cream. Rose cheese. <laughs> cheese? <laughs> cheese. Ice cream and cheese. <laughs> Are you actually crazy? Nice Lee has decided that a good hangover cure is oh, nice this, yeah, this nice head. Looks <laughs> 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 It's just like, what? Not better, right? I can't believe he's just done that. Horrific. Oh, I mean, it's bad enough being hungover, but eating a rabbit head, what? Ugh. I feel sick now if I didn't before. <laughs> Hangers, I'm so hungover as well. I don't know if I should be eating this or not. <laughs> We basically had a complete hangover day today. We've not really done a lot, as you see from earlier. Um, we are about to get on another night train. Hopefully just gonna maybe watch some Lord of the Rings. Second instalment, a little bit of um, Helm's Deep. Woo. Anyway, um, I just was gonna film a little bit of our hostel. Um, we're in the, the Mr. Panda hostel. So as you can see behind me, it's a little bit chaotic here at the moment. Everyone's pretty exhausted. for a plastic I'll ticket and, and then they give it back to you no, for no reason for no reason whatsoever we've not established why this happens but Thank look he comes around with his little folder there was a jargon under the bell tower that's why the beautiful bell tower yeah. yeah. like to, like, to push the jargon back to the to the ground and uh, that's also we say Xi'an is the jargon city of China that's why Xi'an is right in the middle of China as well this I might wake us up at 6 a.m. Brilliant. Oh, Jack was like, Close can we hear it? And the guy was like, yeah, if you get up in time. I was like, no, no, no. He's meaning, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> there are eight rivers by Shia, and there are lots of mountains around Shia, so only Shia is flat in the middle. That's why they, they choose, the, they choose the, the capital here. Then they move to Beijing, they move the capital to Beijing. We did a bike ride around the whole of like the wall and the gate. It was a little bit rickety. We will show you the footage that we got on the GoPro. How did you guys enjoy the bike ride? Very it good was, fun. Yeah? It was good for the first like 20 minutes and then your butt started to hurt. And then, <laughs> and then your arms. And then, and then your arms and then there were lots of potholes. But the view was amazing. So. <laughs> awesome. So you, you're the thumbs up, yeah? You yeah, re you recommend it. Definitely. Anyone yeah. coming on this tour or even coming to visit the city, do the bike ride. <laughs> So we are at the Terracotta Warriors um, and Charlie's too squeaky to talk, finally. So you've got me. This is our new guide. Hello. Lele. Ni hao. Um, yeah, we're about to go watch a short film. Over thousands of years, many emperors and imperial officials have lived and been buried here. Worst film ever. That was officially the worst movie I've ever sat through. He gave us about three minutes information, which was totally pointless. <laughs> about a 20 minute film. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if you come here, don't do that. Maybe just read like the first paragraph on Wikipedia. It's more productive. So, this is the uh, Terrigo's army. So, basically, this is, so we are standing on a tomb now. This is the tomb. Oh. So under, un, under the Terrigo's army, there is a palace, three, three more floors, it's 150 meters deep. 
down, down there. And uh, at the bottom floor, the, the, the bottom floor is the emperor. It's, and in his, in his room, it's full of mercury. That's why it's still not it's still not open yet. And the thief, they're not getting into the tomb, his tomb yet because it's full of mercury and the technology is not good as well. And at the moment, so no one can open that tomb. So we're just walking into tomb two. As you can tell, I've completely lost my voice again. And so I was asking Amanda to do video diary. Two months ago, right? Seem to be missing vital part of the itinerary. I see the leftovers. They are terror at the inside. Underneath. <laughs> so this is definitely work in progress. Well, they're like working on it over there. It's chucking it down with rain, really soggy. So, anyway, I think this is the main attraction. Boom. Terracotta Warriors. Originally, all the soldiers had colours on them. They basically, when they opened them up, all the colour went. So they're trying to preserve it with um, all their very sophisticated technology, which apparently is cling film. Cling film. Great. Here we have more cling filmed terracotta soldiers. This is the um, modern technology they needed to. Keep the colour? To keep the colour clean for me. That night we went to a traditional Chinese music and dance show, which was totally mesmerising. <laughs> The next day, we were on the bus on our way to Shaolin, which is the birthplace of Kung Fu. <laughs> so I was showing the boys last night your uh, tree. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Tackling a tree. The tree incident. The tree incident. As it might be called. <laughs> <laughs> and here it is again, just in case you missed it. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> So we survived the six hour bus journey. We've just got to our little guest house and we're having lunch. <laughs> B just informed us she slept for, for five and a half hours of the six hours, so that was good. Hard well on me. <laughs> we're, we're carving up ready for our kung fu lesson. Shaolin Kung Fu is not about fighting, it's not about like martial arts, it's more about Qigong. Qigong. Have you guys heard of Qigong before? Yeah. Chicken? Okay, Ch no, Chicken. <laughs> Qigong, soft, soft chicken. Qigong. Soft Qigong. Soft Qigong. Chicken. Like, like, outside. to lean on this spike with his throat. Oh my god, here we go. Oh no. I really hope this is not in our kung fu lesson. <laughs> <laughs> I 
like we've been thrown into a den of demon ninjas. <laughs> Place of martial arts in the whole entire world, other than wrestling, which predates Kung Fu. But if you look over here, okay, there's like uh, two peaks and then a flat peak in the middle. You can see some little objects at the top. Mm. The history here, the story here is uh, 1,500 years ago, there was an Indian monk named Da Mo. He came to China and he came to Shaolin and he uh, started teaching Buddhism. And he went on the top of that mountain and meditated for nine years in a cave. And he, while he was doing this every day, he would practice these exercises. After nine years, he came down the cave and taught the monks these exercises. Later on, you know, dangerous times, they, they, they realized these exercises could be used, you know, for fighting and martial arts. Uh, so we guys are going to have a little class now, do some empty hand, uh, kung fu, and then some weapon stuff. Next up, it was our turn. And as you can see here, we all took to it pretty well. <laughs> Stance. Your lead leg is bent, your rear leg is locked. Straight back, Vegas. Land in a horse stance. Punch with your right. Squat. Squat. Come on, be lower. Alright. Okay, very good. Is it give up on you? <laughs> Put a thumbs up earlier. Okay. Let's defend your hat. Ah, are you still filming? Yes, I am. <laughs> I'm doing that. Keep it <laughs> this will be a tie. Left back. Left back. Trick. <laughs> Doesn't work. Awesome kung fu lesson. <laughs> These kids are amazing. <laughs> we just about survived our kung fu lesson and had completed our first 10 days of the tour. China was fast becoming one of my favourite countries, not only because of the epic scenery, but because of how welcoming and charming their culture is. We had also seen and done some pretty unique things. Next time we continue our loop around China with the Dragon Trip. We're going all the way up to there. Steps are bad enough. Oh, look at these bad boys. Jack ends up in a kung fu competition. And we get to camp overnight at the Great Wall of China. Day one of the dragon trip. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not like a, a lion or a small dragon. Dropping a passport everywhere. <laughs> Amanda, douchebag. I'm holding on to like a pebble. <laughs> I've got nothing. <laughs> Covering the panda. <laughs> Game's turn around now. <laughs> yeah, look, I'm filming someone that can actually do it. Uh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> hello. <laughs> 